information about the Titanic wireless scene here in Wayscan in two weeks' time. But for now, back to you, Jeff. Thank you very much, Ray Robinson at KVOH in Los Angeles. Over the past three or four months, we've been bringing you a series of reports from the A-19 High-Frequency Coordination Conference that took place in Tunis, Tunisia. After the conference ended, they sat down with our regular commentator, Gary Plummer, of WWCR, to talk about the conference results. Okay, we're practically at the end of the HFCC A-19 conference here in Tunis now, uh, on the Friday of the, of the meeting, and... Uh, we, we started out with uh, uh, a little bit of um, bad news about Contact in South Africa, right. but they, they did make uh, some rather worrying comments at the, at the uh, session we had. Arrived at Pier 34 in New York Harbor at 9.25 p.m. on Thursday evening, April the 18th, at the end of its three-day ordeal and it slowly disgorged its 705 survivors from the Titanic and its only 740 passengers and we plan to present more information about the Titanic wireless scene here in Wavestown in two weeks' time. But for now, back to you. We've been bringing you a series of reports from the A-19 High Frequency Coordination Conference that took place in Tunis, Tunisia. After the conference ended, I sat down with our regular commentator, Gary Plummer, of WWCR, to talk about the conference report. Today, we're technically at the end of the HFCC A-19 conference here in Tunis now, uh, on the Friday of the, of the meeting, and... Uh, we, we started out with uh, uh, a little bit of um, bad news about contact in South Africa, right. but they they did make a, some rather worrying comments at the at a, uh, session we had on Thursday. Um, they played the future uh, show that was quite a Yeah, we had that meeting yesterday. And you're going on a different excursion today. Yes, yes, yes the management uh, uh, is having a uh, offering a uh, about six, seven o'clock excursion to some of the areas of Carthage, I understand, and the uh, aqueducts, I believe it is. And I think we've probably got a well over half of the, uh, you know, we do a half day in the mornings. Uh, uh, I believe, as a matter of fact, you're headed to the desert later <laughs> today, aren't you? It's the second part of the... Yeah, yeah, I'm chasing there and going down to a place called Kazir in Sahara, uh, Tunisia, on the, on the edge of the Sahara Desert, kind of an oasis, and uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, And I, I understand there's a, a nice Tunisian lunch somewhere. That's what I understand, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, they've been they've been good about that. They uh, asked me how to dinner for the, all the attendees on Wednesday, yeah. and it was uh, local cuisine uh, and uh, had local music. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, it, um, it, was, it was it was pretty good, I thought. You know, it was uh, an all woman uh, orchestra. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Tunisian, uh, Tunisian, 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, very interesting. Uh, interesting. Uh, some of them, yeah, like eight. Yeah, orchestra was like eight, eight feet all women. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they played virtually nonstop for about three hours uh, during the meal. And I think everybody had a good time. And uh, yeah. truly local customs and local cuisines. Mm -hmm. uh, ending with the uh, typical uh, mint tea here. <laughs> as a matter of fact, yeah. Uh, but the, uh, 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 on Thursday, the uh, future of, of shortwave roundtable, this is something a little different. It was proposed by uh, Alfredo Petroneo of uh, IRRF, Italian Radio Relay Service in Milano. That's right. And uh, we, we didn't really know how much interest there would be on the part of the, the frequency oh, managers on oh, yeah. um, um, discussing the future shortwave, but, but it was standing room only. It was standing room <laughs> only. Uh, we were surprised uh, the room that we were going to have it in would, would typically seat maybe 25, mm -hmm. something like that. And we went
wound up completely filling the room, bringing in additional chairs, and we had standing room only outside local music, and it was a big time. It was, it was, it was pretty good, I thought, you know. It was uh, an all-woman uh, orchestra. Yeah, yeah. Uh, of Tunisian uh, uh, Tunisian years, yeah. yeah. Uh, very interesting, uh, uh, instruments, I don't know. Yeah, um, like eight. The orchestra was like eight, eight feet all-women. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, they played virtually non-stop for about three hours uh, during the meal. And, uh, I think everybody had a good time and uh, truly local customs and local cuisine. Mm -hmm. um, ending with the uh, people uh, mint tea is here. It is, as a matter of fact, yeah. yeah. But the, uh, 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 on Thursday, the uh, feature of Shortwave Roundtable, this is something a little different. It was proposed by uh, a friend of the Pernail of uh, I double R S Italian Radio Weaver Service in Milano. That's right. And uh, we, we didn't really know how much interest there would be on the part of the, the frequency manager. Oh yeah. And Compass Media was talking about uh, one of the big problems is that there are no listenership figures for shortly for the internet. You know how many people have logged on, how many people oh, yeah. seeing it from that page and so on. But for short ways, you don't know how many listeners there are, and that is a problem trying to sell management on the idea. It's a problem in trying to sell clients. Oh, yeah, yeah. Metrics, as they refer yeah. to them, you know. Right. And uh, he's right. On the internet, you can take that package to a client. You can take that package to upper man anywhere and say, look at this, I've got this reach. I have this target. Here's proof of this. And, you know, by definition, there's trouble with that in short way because they don't have internet. They don't have electricity. You know, I, 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 I can ask for a response, but if they can't even, if they don't have electricity, they're going to have a lot of trouble completing the internet survey, don't you think? Yeah. yeah. And those are people who uh, probably listen to short ways. Uh, Alfredo, uh, Dr. Neal, was mentioning that uh, uh, one way of getting some feedback is uh, while you're doing your shortwave broadcast, so some some stations uh, have a Facebook page where people can can interact mm -hmm. uh, at the same time as the, the transmissions. And as long as you have access to internet, that's a great idea. And Leon came up. I mean, his point is well taken, but as he said, it's a conundrum because we're not broadcasting to people that are listening to us because there is no other mm -hmm. alternative. So by definition, it's tough to go to a client and say, I have reached 1.675 million and I got 486,000 responses. Um, it, it's, a, it's something that everybody said we, we would need to figure out a better way. Uh, and a point that you made is that uh, a lot of the management of these uh, shortwave stations really don't have much understanding of shortwave. No. Definition. There's trouble with that in short way because they don't have internet, they don't have electricity. You know, uh, I, I can ask for a response, but if they can't even, if they don't have electricity, they're going to have a lot of trouble completing an internet survey, don't you think? Yeah. yeah. And those are people who uh, probably look in the short way. Oh, yeah. Uh, Alfredo, uh, I was mentioning that uh, uh, one way of getting some feedback is. Uh, well, you're doing a shortly broadcast of uh, a Facebook page where people can, can interact. Mm -hmm. uh, it depends on how you feel about having it, you know. Mm -hmm. Ken Wingwood can reach beyond Australia. Mm -hmm. uh, mentioned that uh, they broadcast mainly to uh, India and Asia, Australia there, uh, and that uh, lots of the uh, listeners that they Transmit to you because no internet or no power. Yeah, it's kind of tough to complete internet survey when you have no electricity. But before I forget it, didn't George Ross mention that there was like 32 different dongle or receiver things? Yes, exactly. They said there were 39 receivers that were available to to listen to DRM. Most of them are are dongle. Yeah, that they like attached to the USB port, I guess. Um, yeah. So you kind of got that same thing again. I've got a nice stone with electricity in it. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, 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 I thought he said thirty-nine different. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Some of them as low as twenty dollars. I think. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, um, Glenn Williams from uh, IBB or 
mentioned that they, they have a mix of, uh, of uh, AM, FM, and, and shortwave, but that uh, shortwave is still is still big, and, and they are uh, continuing uh, sort of a study. They're not tying back on shortwave. Yeah, uh, you mentioned that, and of course, you know, when we have our NAS babies in Rome, typically his boss, Gerhard Straub, is, is there for some of those. And he mentioned to us last, last year at this uh, NASB meeting that shortwave was still very strong. Mm -hmm. One of the uh, uh, topics that came up at this session on the future of shortwave was spare parts. Mm -hmm. And many people mentioned that uh, a big problem with the analog shortwave transmitters that are out there now is that uh, they're aging. Uh, these transmitters can last a long time. Uh, the DRM, most of them are, are dongles. Yeah, that they like attached to the USB port, I guess. Or, yeah. So you kind of got that same thing again. I got a nice dongle, but I don't have electricity in it. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. But yeah, I thought he said 39 different. Uh, yeah. yeah. Some of them as low as $20, I think. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Glenn Williams from uh, IDD or USBM now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, that they, they have a mix of uh, of uh, AM, FM, and, and shortwave, but that uh, shortwave is still, is still big, and, and uh, you know, everybody said it would be, it would really be nice if we just need more, you know, you know I, I was thinking, I said, it's something that we have done, like you, RMR, WWCR, uh, WWN, uh, and even the Pastor Scott's University Network have all been working in tandem for the last couple of years at least to you know, engineer to engineer, do you know where I can get this part? Do you know how I can do this? Yeah. Um, I think that's one of the things this this conference or this meeting kind of brought up. Maybe we could somehow get better about exchanging information. Well, and one of the ideas uh, proposed was to, to put a bulletin board on the HFCC webpage where stations could... Uh, you know, if they're looking for a particular part, they could uh, put that on there, and if someone has it, they can help them see how much it is. Uh, or if they have spare parts that they're willing to sell, they could put that on there as well. I think that's a good idea. That's, uh, and that way, all of these uh, people that attend these things would have access to it. it, it would, it's always the same, Jeff. It's imperfect information. You know, if you don't know uh, enough about how to fix something, it's going to be hard to fix it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I know your guys down at Upy Chubby have been rebuilding parts for years and years. Oh, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of stations don't have that capability. That's right, you're lucky for that. You're lucky. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, if they can find stations that have parts, uh, get them in perhaps a more yeah. reasonable price. Right. Yeah. Or yeah. yeah. well, you can swap and trade back and forth. Yes, there's a lot of parts that are floating around. I know you guys have a lot. We do. Uh, as a matter of fact, I know last month we swapped some parts with WWN. We had four of them, and they needed some, and there was another part that we didn't have any, they had three, so hopefully this idea of the bulletin board, for lack of a better word, may, may be a useful, useful thing. Yeah. And uh, I think I mentioned that uh, we need to advertise to people that shortly radio exists, and uh, most of them are from Nashville. Shortly going as long as possible uh, by maintaining these analog transmitters. And he's, he's right. You know, he says shortwave, regardless of the type, digital, analog, whatever. Uh, you are any of those. And that shortwave needs to continue. I, mean, I think everybody in that room. TDS and Science uh, mentioned that uh, they, a few years ago, had to uh, close down their transmitter site in uh, Montgomery, yeah, Montgomery, in yeah. French Guiana. Uh, that it was doing fine. It was, uh, you know, reaching a, a wide audience and so on. But they just didn't have the clientele to be able to uh, maintain it. That's right. <laughs> and it was one of those uh, massive uh, rotatable antennas, if I remember correctly. I think, so. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Um, Leon uh, proposed. Uh, 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 so that you need and so again, you know, the cell air type. And uh, Jerome from TDF uh, suggested uh, afterwards that 
maybe we could create an HFCC marketing committee to uh, get together and see what kind of figures uh, we can get on this and share share information yeah, and right. and it from an industry wide standpoint. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Well, that's you know that's a good idea. I, I didn't know that. I think we ought to consider it. Yeah, I do think we ought to consider. It was brought up that in Buenos Aires we should have a second meeting. Uh, maybe, maybe you could uh, in advance create sort of an agenda and ask people to be thinking about topics. And, uh, and sure, why don't we could have another one? Mm -hmm. Another one, Buenos Aires. I was talking there with Jerry Plummer of WWCR at the HFTC A19 conference in Tunisia. On an upcoming edition of Wave Scan, we'll have the second part of that conversation. And now quickly before we go, a uh, report from John Fellers, our Canadian DX reporter in Vernon, British Columbia, listening in his car parked beside Kalamaka Lake using a Tom Radio CR1A and a Sony AN1 antenna on the roof. 9650 kilohertz, Peter Guinea, Radio Guinea, at 2145 UTC with indigenous music and talk in French. A 2200 UTC of xylophone like music into possible news headlines. Fair reception. And on 9795 kHz from the Philippines, FEBC radio, a 2250 UTC with a looping musical interval signal, checked back at 2311, and in the listed Mon language, a Bible message, and an English translation for reception. Thank you, Harold. Wave scan today with folk music from Slovakia, this courtesy of Radio Slovakia International. Thanks for listening to Wave Scan, the international DX program from Adventist World Radio, researched and written in Indianapolis by Adrian Peterson. Next week, the shortwave station in England that refused to die. The Wooferton story, part two. We'll have more information from the HFCC conference in Tunisia and our Australian DX report. Several QSL cards are available for WaveScan. Send your AWR and KFCA reports for the program to the AWR address in Silver Spring, Maryland. We'll give you in a moment. And also to the station your radio is tuned to. WRMI or WWCR or KVOH or Voice of Hope Africa or WINB on the air in AM or DRM mode or the Italian Radio Relay Service or to the AWR relay station for carryway scan. Remember, too, you can send a reception report to the DX reporters when their segment is on the air here in Scan. They will also verify with their own colorful QSL card. Return postage and address label are always appreciated. The postal address for AWR QSL cards is Adventist World Radio, Box 10188, Silver Spring, Maryland, abbreviated MD, 20914 USA. That's Adventist World Radio, Box 10188, Silver Spring, Maryland, 20914 USA. The email address for AWR QSLs is qsl at awr.org. And the email address for other correspondence to WaveScan is wavescan at awr. .org. I'm Jeff White, WRMI Shortwave in Okeechobee, Florida. Till next week. Good to see you, everyone. Maryland, 20914, USA.
The email address for AWRQSL is QSL at AWR.org. And the email address for other correspondence to Wavescan is Wavescan at AWR.org. I'm Jeff White at WRMI Shortwave in Okeechobee, Florida. Till next week, good listening everyone.